In a previous mailbag video I showed this Xiaomi dual USB port car charger which is capable of power delivery over USB Type-C and Xiaomi claims this is capable of up to 20 volts 5 amps output on the uh, USB Type-C port uh, that would be 100 watts and in the mailbag video I wasn't able to test these claimed specs but today I have uh, prepared a test setup so we can take a closer look at these specs. First, let me once again mention the superb build quality on this unit. It feels like the uh, shell is aluminium. It's super nice finishing. Uh, it has this uh, nice and discreet ring light that lights up in different colors depending on what you connect on which port. And I really like everything about this charger, including the USB Type-C uh, cable that comes with the product. This also feels like a high quality cable. And speaking of high quality, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vollog channel. Check out their website, link below, if you are looking for high quality, fast turnaround PCB fabrication or assembly services. In terms of uh, specs for this uh, charger, I had a better look at the user manual that comes with the product and it's all in Chinese, so I had to use uh, Google Translate on these. Uh, but the unit takes in 12 to 24 volts input. Uh, it's unclear to me if you can use this in a 24 volt car system because you would be operating right at the upper limit of the uh, uh, rated input and the manual isn't clear on that aspect. You got two outputs on the charger, USB-A port capable of quick charge protocol, 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2 amps, but as we'll see later the USB tester also identifies it as being capable of 12 volts on the quick charge protocol and you have a second USB Type-C output which supports power delivery protocol up to 20 volts and 5 amps maximum. If you are using both ports at the same time, the maximum combined total power output is 68 watts and yes, it is capable of powering both ports at the same time as I'm showing here with uh, these two USB testers. And they also mentioned that the 100 watts maximum output is uh, only supported with Xiaomi's fast charge phones that support the uh, function. And they also say to only use their supplied cable uh, to fully support 100 watts power delivery. Uh, and this makes sense. There are a lot of bad cables out there and some of those would probably catch fire at 100 watts. Uh, but to only deliver 100 watts to Xiaomi phones, that doesn't sound right. I mean, if it's power delivery, it should be capable of doing that with any power delivery compatible device, as long as it speaks the uh, correct protocol. So in order to test this uh, charger, I have devised two testing methods. And the first one would be to use my USB Type-C powered Lenovo X1 laptop. And the highest power draw I've seen from this laptop is about uh, 60 watts. Uh, it's not a very power hungry laptop. And if the battery is more than 50 to 60 percent uh, full, I typically see a power draw of around 40 watts. And for this test, I've let it discharge below 50 percent just to uh, be able to uh, pull as much power as possible from the charger. And as a control, I'm also going to uh, plug this 65 watts capable power delivery charger. And this is a small compact charger from uh, Base US. It's based on uh, GAN transistors, so it can be more efficient and it can be crammed into a smaller case uh, due to that. I will also drop some links in, in the description below to the items uh, shown here so you can check them out. As we can see on the USB tester, we're pulling about 60 to 62 watts from the uh, uh, wall plug charger. So this is our control measurement. When we switch to the Xiaomi charger, we should see a similar figure. Otherwise, we might suspect it can't deliver the same power or it doesn't want to. But before I show you the test results from the Xiaomi charger, I'm going to take a moment to ask you to smash that like button because that really helps the channel by uh, creating engagement, which is a metric that YouTube cares about a lot when recommending the video to other viewers. Now I have the Xiaomi charger powered from my bench power supply, which is set for 13 volts. Uh, that is a typical voltage you might find in your car and the maximum available current limit for this power supply, which is 6 amps. I know this is not uh, 100 watts capable, but it doesn't have to be for this test. We're going to start noticing the voltage dropping if we hit that limit anyway. Now, if I plug in the laptop using the same Xiaomi supplied USB Type-C cable, 
I'm seeing a total power draw of 40 watts from the Xiaomi charger, which is about 20 watts lower than what we noticed on the wall plug charger. And this doesn't vary with the input voltage on the car charger. It doesn't matter if it's powered at 12 volts working in a boost configuration or if it's powered at 22 volts working in a step down configuration. And my feeling is that it just doesn't want to output more because it's not being switched in the expected mode like it would happen with a uh, Xiaomi phone. So it's probably uh, the uh, car charger which is advertising itself as only capable of uh, 40 watts over power delivery. The next thing I would like to try is to connect one of these power delivery decoy circuits and this will allow me to trick the charger and tell it to switch to 20 volts for uh, power delivery and I can then connect one of these electronic dummy loads and see how much power I can draw at 20 volts. Who knows, maybe it would let me draw more power through this uh, decoy. So I've run a few tests and it seems that I can draw a maximum of 55 watts until some kind of protection kicks in and turns off the output from the charger. And this would correspond to like a 20 volt 2.25 amp typical power delivery application with some margin before the protection kicks in. And this can only mean one thing. To get the full 100 watts, we need to use the PPS protocol, which stands for Programmable Power Supply. The thing is that power delivery allows setting of a few discrete voltage levels, but PPS goes further and adds the ability to control the output voltage and current characteristics of the power supply at a more granular level. Like you could set the output to be 17.25 volts with a particular current limit. And even though my USB tester uh, does seem to have the option for triggering PPS protocol. I've tried that option and I had to do uh, some hacks in here to power it from an external power bank, but it, it's the same thing. Even if it seems like it switches to PPS protocol, I still can't get it to uh, give me more than 55 watts. So it's most likely a, an issue with this uh, USB tester that I have. Uh, it probably doesn't speak the latest power delivery or PPS protocol, so it doesn't really communicate with the charger the way uh, the charger expects it, so it doesn't give us the full output power. But one thing was clear, uh, the charger is capable of outputting 20 volts even with a 12 volt input, so it can both boost and step down to the required voltage because uh, this is one of the questions people asked. Next, let's look at the thermals. This is my new thermal camera from Unity and I'll put a link to this in the description. Let me know if you'd like to see a review of this camera, just leave a comment below. Uh, this has a thermal sensor resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, but due to supply issues, it's kind of hard to get one of these right now. They're not available in stock, but you can pre-order one. The charger has been running for about 15 minutes at 52 watts of output power and the temperature has reached uh, 57 degrees celsius which is pretty toasty but not exaggerated even my laptop runs at over 40 degrees celsius during high load times and if you're wondering the ambient is 23 degrees celsius here but i don't think the temperatures we're seeing on the charger are a big issue as during normal usage this will be plugged into a pretty heavy metal socket which will help conduct some of the heat away and the user manual does mention it has a thermal protection which will limit its output if it gets too hot but this can mean lower output power if it gets too hot so uh, longer charging times for the user for example if you're in a hot car which has been sitting in the sun uh, with the sun shining directly on the area where the charger is placed, it might get overheated. We have to remember that boost circuits are not as efficient as step-down circuits, so there will be higher losses in this charger, which uh, will affect its thermal performance, but still, it's usable. Also, if we are talking about the full 100 watts output, which were we were unable to get due to the lack of uh, proper gear, we might expect higher temperatures. We might even see the charger trip the over temperature protection, but I would guess they designed this to be able to charge one of their phones at 100 watts, which would probably take something like 20 minutes, which is enough time to charge the phone before the uh, charger overheats. I'm pretty sure they did not design this to be capable of outputting 100 watts for a prolonged periods of time. If you're going to use it for charging a laptop at 45 watts or various other USB Type-C devices, I think the thermals are not going to be an issue. I'm not going to do a teardown of this charger because I quite like it and I want to be able to enjoy using it. However, there is this Chinese website 
which uh, did a full teardown so i will link that in the description below so you can check out the uh, pictures with the internal construction of this charger and the website is also a great resource for all the other chargers that come out of china if you're interested in teardown pictures and that concludes this video i hope this uh, answers most of the questions you had and maybe you learned something from it in the meantime i've ordered a new uh, usb tester uh, which will hopefully allow me to play with the pps protocol and usb-c power supplies uh, and i'm hoping the new one will support the uh, newest standards as always you can support the channel via patreon to keep these videos coming if you're interested in buying some of the projects that i create check out my tnd store which i will link on screen right now thank you for watching this video and i will see you next time